Hi, I'm Krista Namdahl and welcome back to my studio. I've been a teacher, designer, and author in the craft industry for over 15 years. In this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks for making one of the projects from my brand new book, 52 Crochet Gifts. The two color stripes in this Mobius cowl are a wonderful way to demonstrate the magical construction of a Mobius cowl. Foundation ovals are clever for the setup row. The starting chain is replaced with a prettier and stretchier beginning. The stripes grow from the center out because of the figure eight formation of a twisted Mobius cowl. Let's get started. I've made a reduced size sample of the striped Mobius cowl. Here I've already done the first row of the chain seven loops of the chain loop braided edging. And so in working within the shells, the shells of the cowl are a two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. So the first row of the chain seven loops are worked chain seven, single crochet in the chain three space, chain seven, single crochet in the space between the two shells. And so you wanna work that all the way across in your one color. Then you wanna pick up your yarn and, and your crochet hook and with the second color, we're going to work a second set of those chain seven loops and we're going to work them offset. So these are worked from the outside edge to the center of the shells. The outside edge to the center of the shells. For the second set, in order to offset them, we want that chain seven space to be centered over the single crochet of the other set of chain seven loops. So we're going to work into one of the double crochets on this side of each shell and one of the double crochets on this side of each shell. And I'll show you how we do that. So I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the second double crochet of this first shell and slip stitch to join, chain one and single crochet in that same stitch. Then we'll chain seven then working in front of the chain loops that we did in the second color, we're just gonna fold them down to get them out of the way. And then on the working over the single crochet of the previous chain loop row, we're going to double, single crochet into the next double crochet. Chain seven. and then working in front of and passing the next single crochet of the previous set of chain seven spaces. We'll work a single crochet into one of the next two double crochets. It doesn't matter which one, you could do the first one, the second one. I would just suggest that you're consistent in whichever one you choose. Chain seven. Working in front of and over the single crochet of the previous section of chain seven spaces, we'll single crochet in one of the next two double crochets. And we're gonna repeat this all the way across. You can fasten off both yarns at the end of the chain seven loop row because we won't be actually crocheting for any more of this pattern, believe it or not. So first of all, let's take a look here and make sure that you can see that the second set of chain seven loops are worked offset from the first set. So they aren't quite lined up. So there definitely is one that comes first before the next. And that will be important in the next step, which I'll show you in a minute. But I wanted to point out that you can do this particular crochet chain braided loop edging on any project. It doesn't have to be on a row of shells. It could be on a double crochet edge, a single crochet edge, it does not matter. And you can do any size chain loops for your, any size crochet chain loops. The thing is you need those loops to be at least double in size as the distance between the two single crochets. And the reason being is that we need that extra ease for what we're going to do next. Now you can do this next step with your fingers or sometimes it's helpful to just use a larger crochet hook for getting started. And what we're going to do is take our 
first loop. Notice how this is the first loop here. It is the one on the furthest edge. And so we'll start with the coral and we're going to loop the purple through the coral. You could do this with your fingers or a larger crochet hook helps too. Let's see if we can find a larger crochet hook. Here's a larger one. But it can be done with your fingers as well. And so we'll take the next color. Once we start with one color, we're just going to alternate with the next color. So we'll grab the next color and loop it through. Now we're on a coral, so we'll go back to purple and loop the loop through. And what'll happen is as we're add as we're looping these through, we're creating a braided look along the edge of our project and also creating a raised border so it gives you a really beautiful texture on the edge of your project too and definitely a little bit thicker than the actual body of the fabric itself so it definitely gives a nice solid border to your project which would be great for so many different types of projects you could do this for a blanket a scarf a baby blanket dish claws. There's so, I mean, just so many applications. You could put it on anything really. And by doing it in the two higher contrast colors here, you can see how beautiful it's making that braided edge look. Isn't that gorgeous? And like I said, you could do this on with any size yarn. You could do it with any kind of a project. Just make sure that you make your chain loops at least twice the size as the distance between the two crochet or single crochets so that you have enough extra space to be able to manipulate these loops by looping them through each other. It takes a little extra ease to be able to do this technique. Couldn't be easier though. You could even get your kids involved getting their little fingers in there and teaching them how to crochet with these simple little loops to make this beautiful braided edge. Once you get to the end of your crochet braided edging, you will want to secure this with some tails. We happen to have some crochet tails at the end here, so I'll start by looping one of the tails through the last loop and then adding a slip stitch. And that will hold that last one in place. And then when you weave in your loose ends, you'll be able to secure that even more. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. And don't forget, all the links from the things that we talked about in this video are available in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.